I send my greetings to some, and I, I send my hellos to my subscribers and the people who actually sit here and watch my videos. I am 22408 Aaron. Hello, everybody. And uh, one, things I, one of the things I've had quite a fascination with for quite a while now is Windows CE. Now, if you've not heard of Windows CE, that doesn't surprise me, although I'm sure a lot of you who are watching this video probably know exactly what Windows CE is and probably have tried a long time to do it, and I'm about to show you how to do Basically, what Windows CE is, is that it's an embedded operating system designed by Microsoft, but built by you, kind of. Um, what it's designed for is not really for you to use. I mean, Windows CE really is for devices like, I don't know, <laughs> radios, point-of-sale systems. Chances are, you're probably not going to be using it for day-to-day -day computing. Um... But today I'm going to show you how to not only build a Windows CE image, but also emulate that to, that on your computer because emulating is one of those things I've had uh, had very much trouble doing until recently when I found out how to do it. And that's why I'm making this video for you. Anyway, so the things you're going to need to make Windows CE, you're going to need Visual Studio, Microsoft Visual Studio, and the corresponding platform builder for that. Um, in this case, I'm using Microsoft Visual Studio 2008 and Platform Builder for Windows and Compact Embedded 7. Um, I'm sure you can find those on the internet. I'm not going to link anything where how to, how to get it because that would be cruel and that would probably be going against Microsoft terms of li license terms and all that. Besides, you got to do something. I can't do everything for you. You're also going to need Microsoft Virtual PC. Now you can download this from Microsoft's website for free. So those are the only two things you really need so let's go ahead and get started let's start with making the virtual machine that this is going to run off of so let's go and open this and that's weird that it's that's created in the uh... well it's not doing it anymore that's annoying oh there we go it's um... it's in program files slash x86 which means it's a 32-bit program even though i downloaded it for 64-bit grrr anyways so the first time you open it it'll welcome you to the new virtual machine wizard where we'll create our virtual machine. So go ahead and click next. Create a virtual machine. New virtual machine. How about we call it? You can name it anything you want. Um, let's call it IBM Model M. Because that's the keyboard I'm using. Um, operating system other, that's fine. Adjust the RAM. We're not going to use 128 megabytes. I'm sure it'll work, but I'm just going to do 512. And then we're going to use an existing virtual hard disk. You do not need to make your own, and if you do, it will not work. All right. Um, we're going to create a, an existing virtual hard disk. So after you've installed Platform Builder, there is already a virtual hard drive that you can use. That they basically is a Windows CE bootloader looking for your emulating it from Visual Studio. So go and click Next, and we're going to browse for it. Now, I'm already here. It is right here, but this is where it's at. So we're going to go to, this is under local disk C. Now, wherever you installed your Windows C, your platform builder stuff is going to be where it's at. In most cases, it's going to be in local disk C in a file of its own. In this case, it's WinCE 700. That's the default. That'll probably be it or very similar named for you. All right, we're going to go to, pl um, let's see, we're going to go to platform. And then we're going to go under virtual PC. Make sure you install virtual PC when you install platform builder. Um, Go into VM and then HD0 underscore sample. I think there's three different things here. There's CE, VM, um, VPC underscore boot CE, and then there's HD0 underscore sample. So we're going to use that and then finish. And then one more thing. We're just going to go into settings, go to networking, and then usually, it, if, especially if you have already have like VMware or whatever installed, it'll try to default to that Ethernet adapter. In this case, I just you need to use the one the Ethernet adapter that you typically use. In this case, it's this one, and then go and click OK, and then that'll be that'll be good to go. We can close out of that. Let's open up Virtual Virtual Visual Studio now, and I already made a project, but guess what? I was recording it on the wrong screen, so it didn't show up. So I'm gonna have to uh, make it again. I know. Um, anyway, so when you open it up, this is Visual Studio 2008. Go over here, click New, New Project. And then if you under the projects, you'll find Platform Builder. Let's give it a clever name. Second time. That is wonderfully clever. 
Welcome to the OS Design Wizard. This will tell you the root of where your Windows CE stuff is. So if you don't know where it is, just go and open this and it'll tell you where it's at. Let's select Virtual PC uh, x86. That will be it. Click Next. Now these are the common design templates. Um, as you can see, there's Consumer Media Device, which is Portable Media Player, Custom Device, and there's Under Enterprise Device, there's Handheld, which is basically a bog standard, just regular copy of Windows CE. There's Industrial Controller um, that uh, is designed for, I don't know, <laughs> it probably just doesn't have much on it. There's Thin Client, um, looks like it's a th it, you can do kind of some local stuff with this one. But this one, for example, is designed to where you don't do anything. And this is basically just a read-only um, file system, it looks like. Maybe not. I don't know. And then there's Network Projector. I'm really not sure how that's supposed to work. Maybe if you build, you're build, you supposed to build the own projector. That or, I really don't know. I mean, I've run it a couple. I've made it. I've, I've made an OS with this. Um, it worked. It was kind of odd, though. If you want to build one, you can. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there we go. There's small footprint device, basically for a really tiny ex installation. Then there's an embedded device with Silverlight XAML, basically just what it sounds like. We're going to do a portable media device. So let's go ahead and select graphics, media formats, media library, media render, and Windows new media players. MTP responder. Looks like it's already installing that. We're going to install networking and universal plug and play. Excuse me. All right, you've completed the wizard. And we're not going to build anything here. Finish. Acknowledge. Probably should have read that, but I don't really care enough. All right, so here we go right here. What we're going to want to do, right click here, rebuild. Just click that. And then if we bring this up, you'll see some stuff going on. Now this may take a little while, so maybe you can go out and get a soda or a cup of coffee, or maybe you can even watch another one of my videos. I mean, I, I mean, I, I have some pretty cool videos about Cisco phones. If you want to learn about those, people seem to. They like my videos. I, although I do keep getting hounded about how to how to set it up even though I'm not really a teacher. I don't know. Well, I'll come back when it's done so you don't have to hear me rambling. All right, look at that, we're done. And if you wanna know precisely how long that took, here's the time afterwards. That's probably the best way to do it. I don't care, I just know it takes a while. I'm sure it would take even longer if you use a slow crappy laptop. But I don't use a slow crappy laptop, so it doesn't bother me. All right. Now that we have that done, we're going to go ahead and open up Visual, I mean Visual, Virtual PC, and just start that um, that virtual machine. It's going, it's going. What should we do over here? Now we go to Device, if this is here, and you click Attach Device. If that's not here, go over to Target, Attach Device. Then it should come, this little window pops up, Active Target Devices this okay here we go <gasps> it doesn't work halt uh oh something happened well I know what happened and I actually ventured into my card settings so I could emulate this so we can talk about it and how to fix it now if your if your um, if yours does this this isn't has nothing to do with uh, Visual Studio or virtual PC or anything like that it actually has to do with your network card now I have an Intel network uh, network card um, and driver supplied by Dell, and I didn't have the option there. But uh, Intel does have a uh, universal driver that does work, and, uh, and that does work, and will show all these options that you need to configure. So you need to check your with your graphics card vendor to see how to do this. But basically, we we need to turn off UDP checksum. So we're going to go into your our device manager, manage device manager. Network card. Here's my Intel network connection card.
All right, not sure why it wanted to lock up, but I'm in here eventually. Let's go into advanced. As you can see, we have plenty of different options here. Let's scroll down to offloading options. And then let's turn off IPv4 checksum offload. And then just turn off UDP checksum offload here. And here, Oop, I probably wasn't doing, nope, I wasn't. I'm sure somebody was about to type about it on their keyboard. But I caught it. So just by clicking that, closing out of here. I'm that confident that this is gonna work that I actually closed out of device manager. So let's go and pray this works. And if it doesn't work for you, you probably weren't praying hard enough anyways. Oops, I need to restart the uh, the virtual PC. So let's go and do that. Yes, I'm sure. It's downloading. Tell by this and this. That means it's downloading. Not the fastest thing in the world, but if you've been, if you're like me and have spent a very long time trying to figure out how to do this, this is no time at all. And here we are. As you can tell, just Windows CE. Now this version doesn't have, uh, I thought you could get it with a remote desktop, but I guess not. Not that big of a deal anyways. Um, it doesn't even look like it has WordPad. Wow. But it does have command prompt, so you can type and try it. Then these 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 three things right here. If you're just interested, um, the best way I can describe this is if you have a doubled in aftermarket car radio, because most of the, these aftermarket doubled in car radios do run Windows CE, although most of the time they run their own programs. But these are just basic, you know, things that uh, Windows offers. As you can see, I'm sure if you had a song, I wonder if Windows comes with default songs. Yes, it does. Let me try something. I guess while we're trying, I'll demonstrate. Let's say you want to try a program on here. Let's say you're. Let's say you want to try a program on here. I guess that's just not the best way of saying it. Um, go into this device status right here. Click on this. And it opens up this file, uh, this folder. Take whatever you want to. Let's take. What is this? Made with the flaxen hair. I mean, I knew Windows came with some pretty crappy. Uh, songs but you know anyways let's go over to start programs windows explorer release that wasn't made with the i guess as you can see it shows down here that we're accessing all this stuff m m m h i j k l m Here it is, right here. This is the program that I just put on in that file. Let's open it up. And it seems to be running. Maybe. Maybe. That's a bit silly. Why would it not play? Not that it's an issue, because for, like I said, I mean, I don't know if I mentioned, I can't get audio to work on here, so that's not going to work. But that is okay. Let's try something that will probably work. I have a picture of a penguin. Penguins.jpg, and for some reason it's a four star rating. I don't even think I rated it. I'll just go ahead and give it a refresh. And there's the picture of the penguins. Oh, look how cute they are. We could fave it. Doesn't look like it's gonna work. We can maybe delete it. Maybe it's a read-only file system. That's a stupid program.
And last but not least, you have control panel. I'm sure you probably want to, if you want to do this, you can diddle, diddle around with it yourself. Um, but we do have network connection, although I can't prove that because there's no uh, Internet Explorer. Yeah. So I reckon that is just about it. Um, I guess thank you very much for watching. And uh, I suppose I do want to add here, let's go ahead and turn this off. Just by just to turn off, just go and click Detach Device. And it'll automatically close out of everything it needs to. But this is still open, but it'll if you try to do this, it'll lock itself up. See, look, it just locks up. Yep. It's dead as the dodo. Let's go and turn it off, though. All right. So uh, if you want to, there's no, there's a video here. Maybe you know, maybe a little bit higher there. There's a video there. There's a video there. And uh, how about you go and subscribe to me? Here's a subscription button somewhere here. Okie dokie. That's it. Thank you very much for watching.